All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores coming with a quick report. Just wanted to announce the fact that we signed Ricky Souls Jones, another tight end to the group. Pretty funny to me that we signed him like immediately after the first days of OTAs. I guess they looked around and was like, oh, nah, we need at least somebody else in here. And it's an interesting tight end room. We already know Logan Thomas is tight end one. John Bates is the leading candidate for tight end two with him already being a good blocker, can still improve with better technique and he brings a lot of pass catching potential. I think it's fairly underrated. So he looks like the assumed tight end too. And then Samus Reyes is out there doing things that people just can't normally do. His athleticism, his explosion, and all of that is showing. But he's still very raw. A lot of things he does still looks pretty sloppy, like running routes, blocking, and everything like that. I mean, he not only is learning the tight end position, he's learning football. He didn't play football until just now. He was a D1 basketball athlete no football at all so everything is new to him i mean even just the playbook even knowing what an x y and z receiver is like all of that what we already know just growing up watching football even since we've been young he has to learn all of that he's getting a crash course on all of it so of course there's mistakes being made but i love his potential i love his chances of making the 53 man roster but you also have Dion yelder who also played for the chiefs that we signed recently we have tyron swoops tarrant hemingway who they tried out last season they put marcus ball in the practice squad elevated Tamarick Hemingway threw him out there a couple of times didn't like him that much anyway ended up replacing him with Marcus Ball so I'm surprised that Tamarick Hemingway is still here but I guess it's another camp body and it says that Marcus Ball is not technically on the roster which I'm surprised about because I would prefer Marcus Ball over Tamarick Hemingway and I feel like the Washington coaching staff feels the same way but We'll see. But the newest tight end sign is Ricky Souls Jones. He was an undrafted free agent from Texas A&M, signed with the Arizona Cardinals after the 2017 draft. He started one game during his rookie season and another five the following year. He had his best year as a pro in 2018 with 34 receptions, 341 yards, and only one touchdown, though. Then he was waived and claimed by the Cleveland Browns in 2019. He had a career high four touchdowns in his only season there. Then he was signed by the Kansas City Chiefs last year, but only appeared in two games, had one target and zero receptions. And the odds of him making the team are fairly slim, but I give him better chances over everybody not named Logan Thomas, John Bates, and Samus Reyes. I feel like he definitely has a better chance of making it than a Deion Yelder, Tamarick Hemingway, and Tyron Swoops, just based off of his tape and the potential that he brings. Just based off of what he did in Cleveland, you can look at his tape and be like, well, I mean, if he does this, if he does that, you know, if we use him like this, he could actually be a pretty good tight end. I can definitely see him making a statement in OTAs, making a statement in training camp, and potentially making the 53 man roster. Again, it's kind of a long shot, but it's definitely possible because the potential is there. But it's kind of interesting when you think about it that our tight end group consists of two college quarterbacks, Logan Thomas and Tyrone Swoops. But Logan Thomas was a five-star tight end recruit coming out of high school. So it's not like tight end was just like a foreign language to him like it is for Samus Reyes. Then including Samus Reyes, you have a former Chilean national basketball player then you also have two undrafted players and recently just signed Ricky Souls Jones and also from the Chiefs, Dion Yelder, who we also recently signed. And then two late round picks, Tamarin Hemingway in the sixth round and John Bates in the fourth round. That is a really interesting group when you think about it. But at the end of the day, a lot of the great tight ends were not drafted high at all. Travis Kelsey was drafted in round three, the 63rd pick overall. Rob Gronkowski was drafted round two pick 42nd overall george kittle was drafted all the way in the fifth round pick 146th overall and zach Ertz was drafted the highest out of all of them 35th overall in the second round so it's not even like first round tight ends are necessarily the answer you don't necessarily need to draft a tight end in the first round because remember oj howard was supposed to be the next rob gronkowski coming out of alabama can really block can pass catch very well can get open on his own and for tampa bay that just hasn't worked out yet he was supposed to be this generational talent at tight end now i feel like kyle pitts is easily a safer tight end prospect i think he's gonna end up being great and i just really unless there's like crazy unforeseen injuries i think kyle pitts is gonna be great but there's a reason he went fourth overall but like other than that the fact that we have ex quarterbacks the fact that we have an ex basketball player undrafted players 
late round pick guys and our tight end group is not indicative of the fact that our tight end group is bad at all i think actually this tight end group has a lot of potential i mean even for ourselves logan thomas the ex-quarterback he played very well last year. He had a better season than Evan Ingram, who made the Pro Bowl. So you could arguably say Logan Thomas should have made the Pro Bowl last year. Again, especially if Evan Ingram did. Their stats are very similar. And Logan Thomas is a way better blocker. So um, that's just weird in itself. But you don't need to go find a tight end in the first round or to go get these highly valued guys p honer has shown with logan thomas that he can take a guy and turn him into a great tight end so i'm expecting greatness out of this tight end group i'm in spite of where they came from whether in drafted drafted late not even playing football i think samus ray is gonna end up being great and again this is technically supposed to be a ricky souls jones review but you just have to look at this entire tight end group in general you have to look at it in a macro view and how he fits into it and that's my macro view on it but again i think ricky souls jones can end up being a good piece i like the signing let me just say that i know this is pretty much to the end of the video and i probably should have said that in the beginning but i wanted to give all of my reasons why before i said my official review on it and i do like the signing again he's just going to be a camp body with the potential to be a truly impactful tight end for us if he doesn't make the team oh well he signed for very cheap anyway more than likely just a cheap one year deal one year prove it deal and if he ends up being great man that's great value right there and again, I think Logan Thomas is the guaranteed tight end one. I think John Bates has the lead for tight end two, but that's not a sure thing either. And I think Samus Reyes right now has the potential with the, just him being the most athletic out there, the biggest freak athlete. And it shows, it's shown in OTAs, it's shown in mini camps. Even as sloppy as he is, you can see he's the most explosive, fastest, just strongest guy out there. I mean, he's just even physically imposing. So, I mean, he has a good chance of making the 53-man roster as well. But after those three, and maybe even in comparison to Samus Reyes and John Bates, Ricky Souls Jones has a good chance of dethroning one or both of those guys, or at least being the fourth guy. I think as of today, he's already the fourth guy over those other guys I named. So I'm very interested in seeing how this plays out. Again, here's some Ricky Souls Jones film that you can look at while I'm talking. You can uh, make your evaluations of them, but we'll see, man. I mean, again, like I said in my OTAs, important notes and analysis and breakdown and things like that. Media won't have access. The media will not have access to the practices again till June 5th. So from today to June 5th, we will not hear much out of the pro practices. We'll get random leaks here and there, but we definitely will not be getting those Twitter clips and pictures that we normally get and things like that. So we won't really know what's going on and who's winning the tight end battle in the tight end room until June 5th, really. I mean, of course, with Ron Rivera pressers and things like that, again, we'll get little snippets, we'll get little leaks here and there, but we won't really get to see or know anything until June 5th once the media and the reporters have access to the practices again but man that's the end of this video please appreciate the view man please like this video if you liked it if you learned anything please subscribe if you haven't hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get more content just like this one more informative and opinionated videos just like this one all 22 film while we're talking videos like this one i do this a lot show my face sometimes show some film sometimes so stay tuned for all of that and of course man i appreciate all of the support man big shouts out to everybody that supports the channel big shouts out to everybody that's a sponsor especially the pro bowl sponsors who names you see scrolling on the screen right now man i really appreciate y'all big shouts out to everybody especially my one all pro sponsor Jaden. again i appreciate all y'all i'll catch y'all later i'm out good luck ricky soul jones man good luck